Hello everyone, ladies and gentlemen, happy Easter, if you celebrate it of course, happy early Ramadan, Ramadan Mubarak. Uh, with that said, today we are going to be talking about the low end for next gen gaming. As most of you already know, this year is said to be the end of this current generation, in terms of new games of course. Starting next year, a lot of games will be shifting gears and if you are on PC, it's not going to be easy and if you're not ready, you will be left behind. For people playing on consoles, they are going to downscale a lot of these things so you really don't have to worry much. However, you also have new consoles that will be introduced next year. This is going to be the list of specs that I have gathered from new games and upcoming titles. And this is also based on something that I have tested. First, we have to look at the low requirements. In terms of the hard drive space, I would suggest that the lowest should be around 512 gigs. Now, that is a little bit generous. I personally use one terabyte and up, and the reason why I suggested 512 is because of the demands. I truly understand that everyone cannot afford some of these things, but here is the thing. The average games coming out right now, even on the free to play market, is around 20, 30, or 40 gigs and up. And only a few games are still out there maxing out at 20 gigs of data. So when you install these games, your PC still needs some space to breathe, move files around, fragment itself, and store temporary files. And if you don't have enough space on your PC, you will be having some problems. By the time you install three of your favorite free to play or buy to play games, you are basically at almost maybe 256 gigs and a low free space on your PC can actually cause your entire PC to lag. You will have problems even opening files before you even talk about gaming. So this is very important. Personally, I would suggest the one terabyte route. However, if the cheapest that you can get is 512, then 512 will be the route. Now, this next one is something that I personally do. I install my games on an SSD and save other files on the hard drive. I know the argument of why do I have to use or own an SSD to play your game. I know that argument too well. As good as this statement may sound, SSDs are the future. It makes things run faster, even regular workloads are faster. And with the heavy load of some of these upcoming and current games, you will need something with a very powerful read and write speed. While we can all agree that games like Anthem had some poor optimization, it is still heavily demanding and you will see some of the games that came out even before Anthem that still cannot run on some of your current gen PCs. Some of the future titles will most likely demand an SSD for a smoother experience. And it's only a matter of time before you start seeing developers listing an SSD in their system requirements. The next thing we wanna talk about is going to be the CPU and the GPU. I think we're at a point where the GTX 1060, 1660, or the RX 480 for the AMD is becoming cheaper now. While I wouldn't totally go with it all the time, this should be your baseline. The cards are around $100 a piece when you're talking about the 1060 and the RX 480. And for a three gigs version, you can get it for a cheaper price in some stores right now. Now I know what some of you are also thinking. What about if I live in places where the dollar value is quite different and one American dollar equals 200 or 300? Trust me, I fully understand that. I am someone who is from Nigeria, and one American dollar is almost around 300 in Nigeria. Sadly, that is going to be the cost of advancement. It is sad to see it go that way, but it seems that it is not something that we can all easily change. Even if a game is free, you will start noticing some heavy demands over the next few years, even from these free-to-play developers and publishers, and that is just a sad reality and we have to catch up. And when it comes to some of these free-to-play games, games like Warframe is a good example or Path of Exiles and all that kind of stuff. It is a free-to-play game, and though Warframe and games like Apex Legends is not graphically demanding as much as a lot of people would assume, 
these games still continue to get graphic updates to catch up with the times. So within the next couple of months or years, Warframe will be getting another graphics patch. They will stop supporting DirectX 10 or something. So you will see a lot of those things. They already started with the DirectX 9. So you will see a lot of those changes over the next few years. And if we don't evolve and change with these games, our favorite games will leave us behind. Now, in terms of CPU, I will say i5 running at 3.2 gigahertz or above, or an equivalent of it when it comes to the AMD. I believe that we have reached an age where i3s will not even carry you at a low spec when it comes to some of these modern games, unless you just completely strip the game of its graphical assets. In terms of RAM, this is not an exception. Anything lower than 8 gigs of RAM for low requirements or low specs will not be acceptable in the future. In if you're talking about minimum, that is just not going to be acceptable anymore. Now, if you decided you want to go into cloud gaming, that is even more of a reason to get something bigger. That RAM will still be important, especially if you will be cloud gaming using Google Chrome. A lot of us already know Chrome eats a lot of RAM, so you will need that RAM a lot. Now, in terms of recommended, you need to have at least a one terabyte SSD installed, an external drive to save your files that you don't use all the time, so you can just have it in a backup. In terms of GPU, you need at least a GTX 1070 1080 with a minimum of 8 gigs of VRAM. Uh, 1080 will be that sweet spot. I wouldn't suggest that you go ahead and get a 2080 unless you just have that type of money. Now you also need NVMe drives if you can afford it because that will make things a lot easier, makes your life a lot much smoother. i5, i7 is still okay, but you need to be running a newer generation of this CPUs and you need to be running something around 3.6 gigahertz in terms of clock speed. For a RAM, you need at least 16 gigs of RAM. That is just very important. Nothing lower than that on a recommended spec. While this may sound harsh to a lot of people, it's all because technology doesn't wait for us anymore. Over the next few months, you will see a lot of changes. Now, I will also be covering some of the specs for the new and upcoming games. So before you jump into any of these games, free or not, you should know about these things and how they play, even if it is contrary to the developer standards of low requirements or recommended requirements. Now, if you have any more information to add to this video, drop it down below in the comment section. Now. It will help others in the long run if you share any of those information. A lot of us love free stuff because it doesn't cost us anything, but companies are up in their graphics and we just have to follow or be ahead of the times. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.